tonight on this glorious night, this wonderful night, in which we, the Christian community, celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this Easter Vigil Liturgy, three catechumens will be baptised, confirmed, and receive Holy Communion. They will be initiated into the fullness of the Christian life offered through the Catholic Church. What we do this evening is being done indeed across the world. In thousands of Catholic churches, the baptismal liturgy for adults who have sought to become members of the church will be enacted in line with the tradition going back to the very early centuries of Christianity. Here in Australia, an adult who enters the sacramental life of the church following the process of formation and preparation offered through the RCIA is culminating a personal journey of faith. Because each journey, each story is unique. Choosing to become a Catholic at this time really is not a popular choice. Quite the contrary. To embrace the Catholic faith in these days is strikingly countercultural. Yet these three men, among many, many others in churches across Australia, have made this choice this choice for Christ, this choice for his church. And they've made it with joy. They have recognised that truth and life are found in the Catholic faith. Now, I'm sure we all know that there is a view around in our society that Christianity is dying. Christianity, some, some people claim, now is out of touch with modern reality. And they argue that its morality is actually opposed to human development and the development of society. In a way, they're kind of echoing that serpent in the Garden of Eden who whispered that God was not telling the truth about how to be human. Indeed, in our society now, a new way of being human is being proposed. It allows a fluidity freed from the restrictions even of our physical nature. It encourages the pursuit of a self-realisation based on what we feel about ourselves. It's a way of being human that rejects basic biological reality and it denies the intention and wisdom of the creator. And to now, in the modern view, morality, Christian morality, has been replaced by certain, certain societal uh, values which are subject to prevailing attitudes. No longer indeed is the notion of sin appreciated. This is understandable because the idea of sin requires the idea of God because sin is actually an offending of a personal relationship with the living God. Today, many with a secular mentality consider that they have a superior morality grounded in qualities like, in qualities like equality and diversity. It is a supposed morality that is totally devoid of a transcendental element. There's no reference to God and his plan for human life. Yet without a transcendental focus, Christian human morality very quickly can become distorted. And that's what we're witnessing in our society. We find now, too, that many are working seriously to hasten the cultural demise of Christianity. And wave after wave of legislation is restricting the freedom of Christians to hold to and live by what we believe. There are now, for instance, serious attacks on the rights of our schools to uphold Christian beliefs and tenets, especially in the area of the nature of human sexuality. I think we can expect that our institutions will come under increasing pressure to conform to a secular cultural agenda. 
and our right to religious freedom is being denied us. So in a way we really find ourselves today in a situation which was very similar to the very first Christians, particularly for the first three centuries under the Roman Empire. So we find, for instance, in the New Testament, St Paul encouraging Timothy not to be ashamed that he, Paul, was in prison because of his faith. And similarly, St Peter urged his readers not to be ashamed if they have to suffer because they are a Christian. And constant and shrill criticism of traditional Christian beliefs can lead us to have some doubts about our faith when we become labelled as bigots and narrow or reactionary. A cancelled culture too drives any alternate view into isolation. We are forced to remain silent rather than find ourselves subject to anger and harsh condemnation for what we believe and treasure. So being a Christian today will mean that we have to contend with pressures to conform to a path that our society has decided to take. We find we're the odd ones out. And the pressures will be hard to resist. For the sake of not making waves, we will be urged to go along with things that we know are just not right. And sadly, many will. Thus, an adult who embraces the Catholic faith is doing something which is not really socially acceptable. But they're clearly following this path out of personal conviction. In the Easter edition of the Catholic Standard, there's a story of one of our parishioners, Daniel Ewan, who has embraced Catholicism after growing up in Hong Kong with no religion at all. And Daniel has been searching and has found the fullness of truth in the Catholic faith. As I said, each adult, adult who embraces a faith can provide a story of a journey, a journey to finding God, a journey to discovering Christ, a journey to discovering the truth and meaning of human life and the beauty and richness of the Catholic faith. And so joining millions who have found that the faith is a sure foundation for human life and offers the hope of eternal beatitude. So tonight, we celebrate with great joy the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. His own path of fidelity to the truth led to his death. But that was not the end. His resurrection was a vindication of his message and the path that he had taken. The Christian knows that light will triumph over darkness, as our Easter candle tonight reminds us. The Christian knows that life will triumph over death because our Lord has risen from the dead. And the Christian knows that truth will triumph over error and falsehood. We know that we are following the path that leads us to eternal life, to share in the glory of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we as Christians stand with our victorious Saviour and are prepared to endure what we must. We will not abandon the path that Christ has marked out for us and that God in his mercy has revealed to us. We will be faithful and we will not live by lies. We will live in Christ, our risen Lord. We will live in the quiet assurance that the victory is finally his. For the Lord has risen, as he said, Hallelujah. <laughs>